Hello and welcome to my video. Today we're going to be talking about symbolic interactionism and the way it plays an important role in our society in the way it helps us develop viewpoints throughout our lives. So first of all, what is symbolic interactionism? Symbolic interactionism is the view of social behavior that emphasizes linguistic or gestural communication and its subjective understanding. So as, let's take a deeper dive into some symbols we see in our everyday lives and the way they can be viewed as good and bad depending on how you look at it and how it could shape the way you feel about other people or the way people feel about you. First, let's take the cross. The cross has been around for thousands of years. It is seen as a symbol of hope, of salvation, in many different religions throughout our world. Even though many Christians and other religions see this as a holy symbol, a lot of people can see this as childish or naive for believing in such things, just as such as uh, agnostic or atheist uh, people. But to many people, this symbol is a very important part of who they are. And if somebody doesn't identify with this symbol to them, then they are seen as a non-believer or an evil person. Let's look at the flip side of that coin and move over to communion and wine. In the Catholic um, religion, as well as some other religions, the symbolism in here is that we are drinking the blood of Christ and the and eating the body of Christ. Um, this, for many people, is very important because it symbolizes a renewal and a there being and that they're being absolved of their sins. Even though it's something as simple as a wafer cracker and a, some uh, grape juice, just because these objects in and of itself don't really have a lot of meaning or they're not very important by themselves the symbolic act of taking them is a very important religious piece that many people take seriously and feel that, that it's something that they must do on a regular basis. Um, that, so this is a prime example that we could see of um, items being used as a symbolic placeholder for something more important. And uh, that way they can tie it to the religion that they are part of to feel closer to, um, in this case, this, this would be Jesus Christ, or in, uh, in other religions, they could feel closer to whoever their deity is. On the flip side of that coin, uh, going from the Christian faith, we're go we dive into the kind of occult realm. As we could see right here, these three young ladies are holding an upside-down cross, even though the cross is a, is a Christian symbol, in the context being used here, it's seen as a dark occult symbol because this is a way of showing um, kind of disdain for the Christian religion or, the, or Christ himself. Over here on the other side, we have a ram's head with a star and a pentagram in the background. Even though a star, a ram, and a... And a circle don't really have a lot of negative connotation in and of itself by themselves when put together they this creates a symbol of darkness and the occult which many people especially the christian uh faith believe are dark demonic and have tied to the devil himself as we can see here like if you somebody were to see uh an individual wearing a necklace kind of shown as this ram's head with the pentagram in the background, people will automatically label them as a devil worshiper. And that's another example of how symbols can kind of label you as a person and kind of make people have a preemptive notion of who you are and what you believe in just based off a symbol that you are carrying along with you. Even though you might not necessarily believe in what that symbol means, it creates and a viewpoint in other people's eyes of who you are and what you represent. Just as we have here the Star of David, 
in the Jewish faith, this is a very important symbol to them, as well as in the Israeli um, nation, it's a very important symbol because it's on their flag. But just as this is a holy symbol, back in the 1940s during World War II in Nazi Germany, this was used as a symbol of oppression for the Jewish people because they had to wear it on their clothes to set them apart from the rest of the of the Slavic and German um, populations in the Europe. So even though this symbol is seen as a very important religious uh, piece and cultural piece to the Jewish people, it could also be seen as a negative um, symbol used to ostracize them and segregate them from and make them feel lesser than their p- counterparts around them. In this slide right here, we have a donkey and an elephant, two seemingly innocent creatures that don't mean or have any malice in and of themselves. But with the elephant in our society, he represents the GOP. And our friend the donkey over here, he represents the Democrats. These symbols have been used for for generations as a way to differentiate the parties, especially our political parties. Um, in the Demo- in the Grand Old Party, their color of choice is red, while in the Democratic Party, the color of choice is blue. And as we see with the, uh, as we saw with the elections, a lot of Trump supporters were out sporting their red MAGA hats, and a lot of Democrats were sporting their blue trinkets to se- uh, symbolize their affiliation to the Democratic or, or Republican parties. And as we look at this example, it, it's very important to see how, um, even with colors. It could set you apart with who you support and what you believe in. If, for example, the Bloods and the Crips, if you are in a neighborhood where those gangs are very prominent, wearing the wrong colors in the wrong part of town could get you in a lot of trouble because it's a symbol of a, of another gang that they don't want in their area. Even though you might not associate with those gangs, you could still be you know, seen as a threat j- just because of the color that you're sporting because it's a symbol of a rival gang or rival belief. Looking more into modern day here, again, we have the BLM fist and we have the LGBTQ flag. Um, For the BLM fist, for a lot of people, it can mean social justice, a fight for equality, and an end to violence. But to other people, the BLM fist is seen as people that are rioting, looting, people that have no respect for our political offices or our public institutions like our firefighters and police officers. Um, and this is a very polarizing symbol because especially in the climate that we are now, um, being a part of the BLM movement or being against it is could put you on very two opposing um, sides of a of a fight. With as we've seen in a lot of videos online and through the media, whenever there is a BLM rally or or a conservative rally going on and the two meet, there's usually violence that ensues due to the opposing viewpoints that are going on. Same over here with the LGBTQ flag. The LGBTQ flag has been a symbol of the LGBTQ community for many years. And just by somebody wearing that flag or walking with it, it symbolizes who you are, what you believe in, and what you support. Even though somebody somebody doesn't know that you're um, part of that community, just by simply having that symbol with you, it lets others know around you that that's something that you believe in and support. And I think that these are some of the more powerful symbols that we're seeing in our 
society today, especially with the rise of the BLM movement and the LGBTQ community rise. In this last photo, we have the American flag. The American flag can be very polarizing to some and very uplifting for others. To some, it could symbolize freedom, the American dream, and equality. And to others, it symbolizes slavery, bigotry, hatred, and greed. With the American flag, it's not just a symbol that we, that we see and apply in our own society. It's something that applies worldwide. Us being a superpower in the world, you see a lot of other countries either adore this flag or hate it altogether. And it's very polarizing that you see people burning the, this flag and having such disdain for the country that they're in. And on the other side of that coin, you have people that, that will proudly support this flag because they believe that no matter what's going on in this country, that the core principles are still there, regardless of, of who's in power or what's going on in the world. As we close up this year, we've seen a lot of um, violence, hatred come about from the COVID, the elections, um, the police shootings, and riots and looting. But we have to remember that just because somebody is on a different political or moral um, argument or they don't believe in what you believe or they are sporting symbols or gestures of something that you don't agree with doesn't mean that they are bad people or that you cannot reach a consensus with them. Just like a conservative person can still identify with a lot of the struggles and issues that face the, the African-American and Hispanic communities or, um, or uh, even with immigration and things like that. Just as um, people on the left side of the aisle could reach a consensus with the more conservative values or viewpoints because they believe that that's something that is in the right direction or that it's something that they could reach an agreement on. So I, I hope that I've given you some insight into what symbolic interaction interactionalism is and how it plays a very important part in the development of our society and how just something as simple as holding up a flag or wearing a cross around your neck can label you and give people a view of who you are without you having to say anything. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed.